Hello, and welcome back to another unboxing and review video, this time of dun, 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 the Star Wars um, First Order Stormtrooper thing from Star Wars Episode 7. I picked this up sooner than I was going to because being as the new line is coming out, Walmart is dropping the price on these massively. There was only two left in my Walmart, and it was $19, so I had to get one because otherwise it's just gonna be gone. So I picked one up and let's open it up and let me figure this out because that looks weird. Uh, put my head higher up in the camera. Oh yeah, it works. Yeah, there we go. I guess it taller. Maybe I can lower this down a little bit. Okay, that works. Yeah. Get out of my face. So, without further ado, let's open this thing up. First, we have, you guys can't see this, but I'm taking out the... Oh, this knife. Alright, screw it. Go with scissors. I don't have a sharp enough knife to cut those easily. We have the 12 round white magazine, clipazine, whatever it is. Uh, feels right, feels a little bit nicer than the other ones for some reason, but that's that. Now we have the totally awesome scope, which absolutely does nothing, you know, <laughs> as, most nerf, as most nerf scopes, which it might actually be able to fit on other blasters. I have to check that out. And then we have the Magwell, much like I'm assuming what the Raider Magwell would be like. non-expandable but removable stock and it can take any kind of stock that's really cool and it is just like what I thought okay that's cool I'm glad the stock is removable and it's something like it's what I, it's what like I thought it would be like but it's something I've never owned so I mean it's just guesstimation darts are about the coolest I've ever seen. They are um, standard elite darts, the standard 50 caliber foam, and they are red with a semi-transparent red tip, which I absolutely love. That looks really cool, and if I could, I'd probably, I would put LEDs inside of there, but I can't, so. Alright, let's put the blaster together, and then... Oh, that's easy, huh? That can only go on one way. Ooh, that clipped on nicely. Now let's go over the base blaster, get rid of the stock, because that is not part, actually part of the blaster. Um, overall length, rather good, fits very comfortably. Uh, the prime doesn't exactly feel the smoothest, but I don't know. I mean. Okay, I lied. The prime is actually very smooth. That doesn't sound powerful. It doesn't feel powerful either. 
I don't know if that's going to hit the 65 foot range claims. Right, let's put the stock back on and the scope. Leave the scope slides on from the front. Nope. Slides on the other one. How does the scope go on? It's got to go this way. Oh, there we go. It's actually just a sight. But other than that, the angled foregrip is actually comfortable. Uh, more comfortable than a normal one. I don't like holding my, but this is a lot better for my wrist. Um, it's got one tactical rail, jam doors on this side, which you can only open if the prime blaster is primed, which is weird for me, so I don't know. It does have slam fire. Oh, it's got a priming indicator right there. That's cool. Huh? On the side, it's a priming indicator. Ah. Also in the back. Nice. You can see the, uh, well, kind of in the back. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, the stock is actually not a bad length. I mean, it's a little short if I wanted to use the scope, but the scope's never going to do anything. So, I mean, it's not a bad length. It's a little short, but, you know, and this guy here on the box is using using it like this <laughs> i don't know maybe that's why stormtroopers can't aim they got it all angled like that because he's got it across his it looks like he's got it across his body trying to use but yeah the cheek crest is comfortable i guess i don't really care for the scope uh the trigger pull is nice and easy uh every time i pull the trigger it does want to i don't know if you'll be able to tell yeah it does want to pull that back just a hair not sure why that is. But let's load up these darts and shoot off a couple rounds right in here. Jandor only opens when it's primed, or when it's half primed. And it closes on the forward prime. So if it jams, you pull it back, and then you can just pull it forward without having to close the door. Um, did that come with 12 darts? It said 12. I didn't feel like I put 12 darts in there just now. I mean, it, lo it looks like it can take another dart at least. Did I not? I it think you got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. So apparently this is a 13 dart clip because that can easily take another dart without actually being over full. That's a little weird. A little weird, but not bad. Not bad actually. That's kind of cool. You, you you know you'll have one extra ammo when people won't expect it. So Yeah, that's, I mean, I'm not even, like, trying, and my hand is going down all the way, and I can easily take one more dart. Right, let's put it... Obviously, mag goes in the side, much like a raider or a rampage. Prime forward. Fire. Ah, seems like it hits okay. And then half prime. Push the button. Easy button push. Not hard at all. And of course, with slam fire, you could just continually prime and fire and never have to worry about depriming it. But that's it for this. I will go outside, not today because it's really dark out there and it looks like it's going to rain, but another day, hopefully tomorrow, and I will do the testing of this blaster. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of have high hopes for it because it is. Um, it is rather nice, and it is a basically a Rampage reshell, or a Raider reshell, as far as I can tell. And I, I really like this Star Wars symbol, the uh, Empire symbol back here. I'll try and get that close so you can see it. Right there. It's really nice. The, the Star Wars logo is embossed as well as painted. Same with this logo. It's really nice. got a lot of nice lines. If it were to need a repaint, it would be a very good candidate for one. And I picked up new, new, two new paint colors today that I've never seen at Walmart before, and they were 
Um, they were same price as the rest of them, just larger bottles. So, yeah, rather nice. I like it. I'd have to holster it on the the left side because of the mag belt, but that's that for, for now. I will see you guys in the next segment whenever I actually get to do it. Okay, that was weird. Um, but yeah, I guess welcome back to another review. I'm just gonna have to delete that one. Unboxing the Maisto Tech Rock Crawler. Happened to get the green version when I went to pick it up. Uh, I just pulled it out. This is how it sits in the box. The rest of the box is garbage, and this. Just basically telling you how to put in the batteries. So. Uh -huh. what, what, where'd that come from? Oh, underneath. Did you look at that. Yep. And the cap for the other one. Okay. Did not know they were underneath the car. Or the cap. One of them. That's strange. That, I think that's for this one. The cap. Yeah, the cap is for the controller. Alright, so... Straight up in the box, I'm not really enthusiastic about how this is going to perform. It doesn't look great. And I'm also not going to be putting the best batteries in the world in it. buttons on my computer apparently. For you smart asses, it's not that I don't have the strength to do it one handed, it's just a lot easier to do it two handed. When you're trying to clamp something like that down. Doesn't look there's anything else in this box. There might be, but it doesn't really look like it, so that can get tossed. Um Let's take a look at this thing. So, it's got four shocks, a completely independent axle. The front wheels actually turn, and it's got one of these uh, gun-like controllers that I'm never, I'm not really used to. The body itself should be easy enough to take off, so I can put a screw in it. But all. It rotates very well. It's got uh, like bumpers for, I guess, hitting terrain. I wonder if it's. It looks like it might be four wheel drive. So, you gotta. To open the battery cage, you gotta. There's a little. Let me see if I can pull this up and show you. Can I take this thing off? Yeah. Okay. So to open the battery cage on the car, there's this little thing you have to push down and then turn a lever, and it will come off. And now I gotta open, find my double A's and open them up. I don't remember where I put them. So this takes six double A's. Where did my knife go? There it is. Just gonna open these with my knife. I'm actually becoming fairly fond of this knife because I am actually doing the sharpening on it with a sharpening stone I bought from the Dollar Tree for a dollar, and I am very impressed with it. One, 
two, three, four, five, and six. And the on off switch is right here and it's also got three channels, A, B, and C. So, this controller doesn't seem to have an off switch and you need a screwdriver to get into the battery tray for the controller. Forward, back, that must be left and right. Hmm. Not super enthused about that, but. Okay, let's go ahead and install these antenna things here. Doesn't really seem like it matters which one goes on which. They're about they're the same length. Oh, there we go. So it just sits down in there. Give me that. And this presses down on top of that. No, what the heck. Oh, oh. You then the antenna over, and then you put this on there. Don't really care for that. Okay. Ignore how shaky I am. I'm still trembling after doing crap last night, so let me pull you through. There we go. It's actually a nice tight fit for the antenna in this thing, which is nice. This body, the body of this is actually really nice. I quite like it. Don't really care how, for how small it is, but, you know. And you just loop it around and tie a little knot. I think this thing boasted ranges of a hundred feet or so. Right? Am I wrong? Tri channel, full function scale level 3, battery is not included. 4 by 4 is not calling action. No, it does not actually boast a distance of how far away you can control it. Okay. So, let's get me a screwdriver. If I can find one of my Phillips. I don't know if this one will do it. This one doesn't like to really without screwing it up. No, you won't. That one's for bigger projects. I left the antenna to the other one. Whoop. I have to go hunt for some antennas too. Go to hobby shops and stuff. Do you like fold up or? Okay, you just come out. So positive goes on this side. So triple A, please. Positive, negative, and the door. It is rather important that you put those in the right way, but then again, they really don't go any other way. It's kind of hard to do that wrong. You okay? okay. Alright, so let's put this on A. And this on A, which is the very first click. Right. Oh, it is four-wheel drive. Okay. <laughs> I am I am actually impressed with that. That is very pleasing to me to know that this is four wheel drive. I cannot wait for it to stop raining today and or maybe tomorrow and and take this thing outside because this is going to be so much fun. And I have a bunch of junk I could throw on the ground and have it crawl over so. I mean, this this is gonna be fun. This is gonna, I think this is gonna be totally awesome. Is it 
What? No, no, that it, it's not coming down hard enough. There's not enough wind. And it's also in a cardboard box. But it's, it should also be dry. I still got to paint the other side, though. All right, this thing is actually primed for a lot of LED work, too, in the body. Which I would obviously wire up completely separate from everything else and not to the motors. Because I don't want to open up these motor cages. Because this thing's already a monster. And uh, just look at that. That is awesome. I, I, I'm impressed. I, I love this thing already, and I haven't even actually driven it yet, so... That's gonna do it for the review part, or the unboxing part. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you come back for the other part where I actually drive it, and maybe I'll have a camera mounted on top. Ooh. So we get to see some action. I went, And on that note, I will see you guys next time.